Roberto asks, reviewing the material about mining on slide 20 and 21, the last step refers to the hash being reviewed against the desired pattern uh, in order to arrive to the prize, the reward. How is this desired pattern defined and generated in the decentralized platform? Is the desired pattern somehow centralized and broadcast to each node? What are the inputs to build this desired pattern? Is there a new pattern created whenever a new block has been created, and does that change per block? Um, great questions. This is uh, an area that many of our students find uh, confusing, to say the least. It is the uh, topic of mining, um, and it's not that easy to understand. So let's get our terms correct, first of all. Uh, the desired pattern is called the target, and the target defines the difficulty. And if a miner achieves, uh, through the proof-of-work algorithm, a result that is less than the target, they are eligible to receive reward if the rest of the information in the block and the transactions are valid and can be uh, validated through the consensus rules by everybody else. Now, um, how is the target defined? And um, how does it change? This is a great question, and it's, uh, it's an area of great confusion. So the target is basically a number, and that number has to be greater than the hash of the block. Uh, so it's simply a greater than, less than operator that is being used to compare against this desired pattern. Um, the miners are mining uh, by hashing the header of each block, and the hash they're producing, uh, which looks like a, a long string of hexadecimal digits, that's usually how it's presented, hexadecimal digits, is essentially just a number, right? And so if you think of the hash as a number, then the target is another number and the hash of a block has to be less than the target. Now, uh, one way uh, I like to uh, think of this is that the target is like a limbo bar. Uh, and if you've ever seen limbo, it's where you have to dance and pass underneath a, a bar. And the lower the bar gets, the harder it is to, to pass underneath it for every limbo dancer. Um, so uh, if the target is lowered, it's actually harder to find a number that's smaller than that target. So every time the target gets lower, the difficulty uh, becomes greater because it's harder to find a number that fits underneath the target. And that's basically the process by which the target is compared to the block hash. So the target number um, is a number that defines the difficulty of the proof of work mining algorithm. And if you see the target number, what you notice immediately by looking at it is that the first few digits are zeros. And that's because um, while the number started as a very high number back in 2009, uh, when Satoshi Nakamoto mined the very first block, um, that number has now become billions of times uh, smaller. Um, and that makes the calculation billions of times more difficult. And so as it becomes a smaller number, that means that the leading uh, digits of that number are zeros. Uh, so if you think of, uh, for example, um, let's take a, a big number, a million. What's smaller than that? Well, it's uh, 999,999 is smaller than a million, but that can be written as 0999. 999, so there's a zero in the front. And what's smaller than that? Well, um, 1,000 is smaller than that, and that can be written as 000, uh, 1,000, uh, and that's smaller than a million. So as you can see, as we go down, uh, there's a lot of zeros at the beginning of the number. And finding a number that's even smaller than that target gets more difficult the smaller the target. And so the hashing process that miners conduct is random. It's a process by which they use a random number, they produce a hash, and what comes out of the cryptographic hash function is a number that appears to be random. You can't predict what the number will be. And so how do you know if it's smaller? Um, you can't predict whether it's going to be smaller than the target. And in order to find a number that is smaller than the target, you just have to keep trying again and again and again, uh, pulling out these random numbers from the cryptographic hash function until one of them, just by sheer chance, is smaller than the target. The lower the target, 
the more hashing you have to do before you find one that is smaller than the target. And that's the process by which uh, the mining reward is uh, allocated uh, through the proof-of-work algorithm. So going back to Roberto's question, is the desired pattern somehow centralized and broadcast to each node? No. Um, each node independently calculates what the target should be and adjusts it. It started with a specific number that was hard-coded in the software in January of 2009 with a Genesis block. Since then, every two weeks, we have a retargeting, as it's called. So every 2016 blocks, which is approximately two weeks, uh, on the 2016th block exactly, every node in the network calculates a new target for that next block. So they do uh, blocks 1 through 2015, and then they say, okay, the next block is going to be block 2016. Therefore, uh, we have completed one retargeting period, and we need to recalculate independently what the target should be for block 2016 before it's mined. Uh, so what should that be? Well, let's look at the previous uh, blocks and say, uh, how long did those take? So we look at the previous 2016 blocks, and we say, uh, it should take uh, 20,160 minutes, because it's 10 minutes per block. Uh, now, if, if we count how long it took to mine the previous 2016 blocks, and we find that it was less than 20,160 minutes, uh, that means that we were finding blocks faster than we should be finding blocks, which means that the difficulty was not as high as it needs to be. It was too easy. As a result, the target needs to be lowered proportionately in order to make it more difficult. If, on the other hand, we're finding blocks, and it's taking longer than 20,160 minutes to find 2016 blocks, that means it's too difficult, and we're finding blocks too slowly. And so the target is adjusted up to make it easier to find something that's less than the target. And uh, that's done, again, proportionately. So, if you take that formula, the formula is um, proportionally, to proportionally adjust the target up or down uh, by exactly the ratio of how long it took to find the blocks um, over how long it should take to find the blocks, which is 20,160 minutes. And that proportionate adjustment is the same for every node. So even though the nodes are not communicating or coordinating in any way, they can all count how long it took to find the previous 2016 blocks, and that's the same number across all of the nodes, because they, they count it by looking at the time in the headers of the blocks. They can also all divide that number by 20,160 minutes, which is the same number, and they're going to arrive at the same exact result. And if they uh, then multiply proportionately the target by that number, they're going to get a new target. And all of the nodes in the network, having, having calculated the same equation with the same inputs, will arrive at the same conclusion. So they will all independently figure out what the target should be for, block, uh, for the next block, the 2017th block in the series. And then 2016 blocks later, they'll do it again. And they'll put the same inputs in the equation, and they'll get the same retargeting value um, across the entire network. So even though there's no synchronization, because they're using the same inputs, they all arrive at exactly the same conclusion. And that becomes the consensus target. Um, so even if another node is lying and says that um, they found a valid block, since all of the nodes know what the target should be, um, for this period, this retargeting period, they will all check against what that target should be, and they will only accept a block uh, that has actually um, been mined to that specification, where the block hash is less than the target. So to answer the second question, what are the inputs to build this desired pattern? It's the number of minutes it took to mine the previous 2016 blocks, um, divided by the expected number of minutes, which is 20,160. And the next question by Roberto was, is there a new pattern created whenever a new block has been created? And does it change every block? No, it changes every retargeting period, which is every 2016 blocks, or approximately two weeks. Christoph also asks, is 2016 blocks still an optimal adjustment frequency considering the current volatility, or should it be more frequent? 
Um, this is an ongoing debate, um, which a lot of developers in the Bitcoin community have from time to time. There have been many different suggestions for changing the difficulty retargeting algorithm, um, and making it uh, perhaps a bit more nimble. There are some disadvantages to making it more frequent, because then it can get a sort of whiplash effect, where short-term fluctuations affect the difficulty, which cause more short-term fluctuations, which can actually increase volatility. Um, by doing it every two weeks, that actually results in reducing volatility, because it acts as a damper. Um, some, uh, some developers have suggested various uh, more sophisticated algorithms than simply a, a moving average. For example, using um, some kind of uh, proportionate integrative derivative controller, PID controller, uh, a feedback mechanism, using a different window for a moving average, um, a bit like the way cruise control works on your car. And there are advantages and disadvantages to every different proposal. None of them have progressed. Keep in mind, a change like that would be a hard fork. It would require uh, changing all of the software in the ecosystem in order to. Uh, remain in consensus. It would require massive coordination. And it is the kind of thing that might be considered if there was, uh, together with other changes, a change in the format of the block header, for example, um, in order to do some other big upgrade as a hard fork. Uh, some of the recommendations for um, hard fork planning include a difficulty adjustment algorithm change. Athanasios asks, what happens when the mining rate drops even lower, and it makes no financial sense for miners, and eventually everyone drops out of the mining process? Um, Athanasios, the, the trick here is that when difficulty changes, or when profitability changes, it doesn't affect all miners the same. There are thousands and thousands of miners out there, and they are operating with a fairly broad variety of... Uh, hashing equipment, electricity prices, operating costs, labor costs, utility costs, um, real estate costs, etc., all of which determine their profitability. Think of it as a range. Somewhere in there are miners who are operating on the absolute very latest, most efficient ASICs um, that are installed in the most efficient way possible, and managed in the most efficient way possible, in an environment where real estate costs are dirt cheap, and electricity flows almost free, and labor costs are absolutely minimum. And those miners are going to be wildly profitable at the current difficulty, because they are not the average. Meanwhile, on the other end of the scale are people who are operating with previous generation chips in a place where electricity is more expensive, where real estate costs are more expensive, labor costs are more expensive, etc., they are not going to be profitable. Average profitability obviously is between those two. And if average profitability changes, that is like a moving bar, and more miners will fall below the threshold where it becomes profitable. And that means that the least profitable of miners will abandon the field, and they will be replaced by more efficient miners with more efficient equipment in more efficient locations. Um, so eventually, everyone drops out is not something that happens. If more and more people drop out, then the difficulty goes down, and when the difficulty goes down, it becomes more profitable again for people who just dropped out, so they don't drop out. Um, it's a self-adjusting process. The uh, fewer people doing it, the easier it gets. The more people doing it, the harder it gets. And that means there is always someone making a profit in this environment, um, but not everyone is making a profit.